So who's got the softest animal? I want the bunny rabbit. You think the bunny's the softest? Mm -hmm. This year is soft. I think the rabbit wins. This hat sharp. These are pretty close, but he is pretty fluffy. Good morning, guys. How are you doing today? Out doing the chores. Just letting these guys out. Hey, guys. And the really fun animal to let out are these turkeys, these broad-breasted white turkeys. They just seem to chase us all around. Oh boy, we had, we had one just get stuck in the water bucket. You're going in there, buddy. Can you get out? Ah! There's only a little bit of water in there. He wouldn't have drowned, but couldn't figure out how to get out. These guys basically come up to the corner of their turkey run. I think it's the closest to everything else, all the action, so they can see what everybody else is up to. Tell them what we're gonna do today. Clean the car! Go! the car! We need a bucket and some soapy water. Yeah! Come on, grab a bucket. You want to go show it off? Yeah! Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I have to get touch. <gasps> ooh, ooh, let's put this in. It's a prime mantis. Yeah. I can see, see it. That's a prime mantis. You know what it is? It's driving. I can I can say strive. All right. So today we're going to talk about why we have the birds that we have. We recently did a video about what it's like to raise 85 chickens, and we've got our chickens separated out into several different areas. So we want to go into that a little bit more in depth and explain why we do what we do, why we raise what we raise. So of course in our main flock, we've got 50 layers. So that flock is there specifically to lay eggs for us. We get about one to two dozen a day right now, which is not great considering there are about 50 layers in there. But considering the time of year, how hot it is and that a lot of the chickens are hanging outside the coop most of the day, it's understandable. And so I actually expect that to pick up as it cools off going into the fall before it takes a steep dive into the winter and we get much less eggs. The next type of bird that we raise are meat birds. And while we don't have any of those currently, we've got a bunch in here. And so this is one of our two freezers. We've got a couple of our turkeys from last season of raising turkeys. We've got a bunch of birds there and there. So we raise meat birds to feed our family throughout the year. We'll probably get some more here in the next month or two. So we can raise them over with the turkeys when we move them to another area about a mile away where we've got a lot of our chicken tractors. Now right now I'm over in our, this is our original chicken tractor. And if you're ever curious how to make this, this is John Siskovich's stress-free chicken tractor. We do show how to make this in one of our videos. So over in this area, we have a couple different types of birds. We've got some of our chickens in training. They're teenage chickens, which really we call teenage chickens anything from once we move them out of the brooder 
until they are of laying age. So somewhere between about three or four weeks old to about four to five months old. So usually we'll just raise them in here until they're big enough and we'll move them over to the main flock. But there are some birds in here that are staying here semi-permanently. And those would be our third type of bird and that's our pets. Our pet birds are birds that are more for just for fun, don't really serve much of a purpose. They don't provide meat, they don't provide much as far as eggs and they are just for having some cool looking birds on the farm and those are birds like that guy our old english bantam rooster really cool bird our smallest bird on the farm and then a bunch of these guys are silkies now while silkies are really fun fuzzy cute they lay some really small eggs. So the really the only purpose is to have them as some pets for fun. And they're potentially worth a little bit if you do breed them. You can get a little bit higher price than a standard bird if you were to breed these and sell some baby silkies. But what we want to know today is who's fluffier? These silky gals or our newly acquired lionhead rabbits. So let's check that out. Full stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts I think about you all the time Morning, evening, and midnight Such a wonderful delight So Eli, how soft is that rabbit? Bruce. This is fluff. Chewbum was fluff. Fluff. Soft. This is fluffy. That is fluffy. Who's got the fluffier animal? Me! Me! Chew it! <laughs> Alright Becky, so I was telling them about that we have layers for the eggs, we have meat birds for meat, and then these guys are really just for pets. So what do you like about our bantams and our silkies in, in specifically? Well, they're really good for broody mamas, and they're fun to watch. They're just fluffy and cuddly, and they are super gentle with the kids, so you're right, you can hold it, and you don't have to worry about them just you know, trying to get away or anything. This and the dead end. This is soft end. They're just a fun little pet. And do you like them? Yeah, have feathers. And you can hold them. And you want to hold the bunny rabbit. So who's got the softest animal? I want the bunny rabbit. You think mm -hmm. the bunny's the softest? Mm -hmm. This one is the softest. Had this think, sharp. You think that's soft? I think the rabbit's probably the, the softest. Yeah, I think the rabbit's the softest. Sharp. I think the rabbit wins. This had sharp. These are pretty close, but he is pretty fluffy. talking about birds for our laying flock. How did we pick them? How do we decide on what we get from year to year? How do we develop our laying flock? This turkin has a naked neck, just kind of a unique look. And that's what we look for. When we pick out our birds, we don't necessarily want a whole bunch of one particular type of bird. We want a wide variety of birds, looks, colors. And so we look for a lot of different things. If we see somebody that looks unique, like our rooster, and our, some of our ling hens are lavender orpings. They don't necessarily lay a unique looking egg color, it's just a light brown. But they are just a gorgeous bird and so it's worth having them. Birds like this blue laced red Wyandotte are just really gorgeous as well. And they also lay just a really light colored, like a cream colored egg. But what we really love to have the most of on the farm are some of these darker browns that either come from our well summers or our black copper morans or our americanas or olive eggers that lay a blue green egg or an olive green egg. But then you've also got to balance what do you want, which are eggs to eat. That's the main thing is that we have enough eggs for all of us to eat. And brown egg layers are gonna be the most efficient at laying eggs. And so the australorps, the barred rocks, the Rhode Island reds are gonna lay you the most 
eggs per bird, where birds that lay specialty colored eggs, like our blue-green egg coming from Americana, they're gonna lay much less. So we've gotta have a lot more birds of those breeds to lay those colored eggs. So for us, building our flock, it's been one, a learning experience as far as what do we need. And so we initially just got a lot of birds and then we got way too many eggs. And so we've been starting to cut back to get the right amount of birds for the eggs that we want to produce and just everything combined to make a unique looking flock for us. What are you doing? <laughs> Who are you hiding from? <laughs> You guys want to play with the sprinkler? Forgo, give up everything that I own. Yeah, I'd give it all up now just to be with you somehow. Unexpected love was found. Hey guys, one last thing. I was bestowed the honor of writing a review for this book called 99 and a half homesteading poems by kenny coogan kenny is a freelance author lives in florida owns a lot of animals in his backyard and he wrote this poetry book but it contains so much more than just poetry it's got a forward by amy fuel if you know her from homesteaders of america it's got a lot of great poems but within the poems are a lot of great information a lot of great tips there's a lot of good photography in here and there's even a bunch of homestead recipes in here. It's a really cool book. And like I said, we were lucky enough to be one of the reviewers for this book. So our name is actually on the back of this. And Kenny has let us give away five of these books. So we're gonna do a giveaway. We've got a link down below and in it you'll have many different ways to get enrolled in the giveaway. The giveaway is gonna run for a week. We're gonna do things like to watch a video, to subscribe to the channel, to like our Facebook page, to like Kenny's Facebook page, uh, Critter Companions, uh, even sign up for our email list. So go down there, check out the different ways you can enroll into the giveaway. And uh, in a week from today, we'll announce the five people that are gonna get this book sent to them for free, and Kenny may even sign it for you. If you don't win this book, be sure to go grab this. I think it's a great book for just immersing yourself in the homestead lifestyle. So good luck on winning. Go check down in the description to get yourself enrolled. And with that, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We had a lot of fun today on the farm and we'll see you next time. Okay. I'm gonna use this. And it can be so hot. I can, I can like different sticks and trees. Totally. <laughs>